This is the 2024 Acura MDX. And you watch down in the comments section, somebody is going to say, that's not a 2024, it's a 2023. Well, you really can't tell the difference between the two because there are no changes for 2024. Uh, the last time this model was redesigned was the 2022 model year. So we'll see what comes in the future. Maybe a refresh for the 2025 model year. We'll wait and find out what happens. So what exactly are the high points here? Well, you have a nice balance of sporty handling and the comfortable ride quality. You don't always get those two in the same vehicle. It's often one or the other, but not both. And there's a lot of great technology here, a lot of features and functionality, and it's better priced than most of its competitors. While there are no changes for 2024, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You still have a spectacular look, very sporty but luxurious look at the same time. The LED headlights, the LED chicane daytime running lights, and we're gonna have that diamond pentagon grill. And depending on who you are, it may look different from one person to another. When you look at the way that everything either flows away from or flows towards the Acura logo, well, it's all a matter of your personal perspective. Tell me what you think about that. And if you like chrome, well, you're gonna have a little bit here, not only on the surround around the front grille, but in a few other places as well. And depending on your situation, you can opt for front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Here's a little bit more of that chrome working its way from the front fender to the side view mirrors. Also around the windows, you got the privacy glass back there. The body colored mirror caps also going to have the turn signal indicators built in and quite a few nice features as far as your remote goes. You can see what all is here. Pretty simple to figure out. I probably don't have to tell you too much about what all is there. And you will most certainly have a lot of meat on the ground. 255 on the width for the tire size. The sidewall comes in with a 50 series sidewall and wrapped around the 20 inch wheels. And one of the more common questions I'm asked, apparently a very popular feature, if I don't show this, people will ask about it. Does it have power folding side view mirrors? They're power folding, they're power adjustable, Everything is here that you would expect or maybe desire. And under the hood, the more than capable 3.5 liter six cylinder engine, 290 horsepower, 267 pounds feet of torque will definitely get the job done. No matter if you have front wheel drive or all wheel drive, power ultimately makes its way through a 10 speed automatic transmission. We will find a little bit more chrome finishing things off here on the rear with the trim piece right there. You also have the trapezoidal exhaust down there, the exhaust finishers and the LED tail lights. If you want to tow, you can tow between 3,500 and 5,000 pounds. Now, one thing that I do like to show here is going to be the power rear door. Now, if you say to yourself that the height of this rear door is not where you want it to be, guess what? You can change that. I'm going to open that all the way and all you have to do is hold this button down and you just listen for the beeps. Hopefully you can hear this. Okay. Don't know if my lapel mic picked that up or not, but what you're gonna find out is that now that I've reset the opening height of the door and I held that button down, now when I open the door back up, it's going to open up all the way. And you obviously can reset that to whatever height you desire. And what about cargo capacity? It is rather plentiful. I talked about how there's a lot of interior and cargo capacity space, not only for driver and passenger, but also for cargo space. 18.1 up to a maximum of 95 cubic feet, depending on how you set things up. Obviously you can lower these rear seats flat and that's going to, or not only rear, but the middle seats as well. You can lower everything down nice and flat, makes it very easy to be able to put your cargo in here and gain access to it to pull it back out. And one more little trick when it comes to cargo capacity, you notice that I removed the middle seat from the middle row. That's right, just like with the Honda Odyssey minivan and the 2023 Honda Pilot, you can do the exact same thing here. 
So you can remove that seat. That can have a lot of advantages for a lot of different situations. And it's gonna be very difficult to show this one-handed because I have to hold the camera with one hand, but I can show you the process for removing this seat. So you're going to pull on this release first, and then right down here is another release. You pull on that, and that's what allows you to tilt the seat forward, and then you can move it out and take it out of the interior. And one more little trick that I wanted to show you. While you do have the protective cover right here for the floor, if you don't have that or it's not in the vehicle or whatever the case is, here's something that you can do. You have the carpeted side of this cover right here that allows you to gain access to a little bit more cargo space underneath the floor. But if you had something you were going to haul back here that could potentially get dirt or sand or whatever you don't want on the carpeted side, then you can actually flip over to the plastic side that takes care of everything. That's very easy to do. Depending on your situation, you can use one side or the other. And by the way, in case you were wondering, is there a 12 volt power outlet back here? There most certainly is. And now we'll take a look into the rear seating area, a little more in depth look than what we've already seen. You can see the nice large door bins right there, comfortable armrests. You put your arm up there and give it the armrest test. Yes, it is very comfortable. And you do have the privacy shades, one on each door. And one thing that I wanted to show before we hop into the back seat, the rear seating area, is that obviously you can move these seats in the middle row a couple of different, into a couple of different positions so that rear seat passengers can have as much leg room as possible. And yes, there is a panoramic sunroof. And I love how easy it is to get these seats moved out of the way. You just push the button right there and it moves out of the way on its own. That makes gaining access to this rear seat area very simple. Let's see if we can do this without making the shot too terribly shaky. You can see where my legs are right here. Now I'm sitting all the way up. This isn't road trip worthy, but it could work for around town. If you wanted to take a few friends around, not too bad. Five foot 10, you can see where my head is on everything, but you can also see that obviously, well, things can change quite a bit as far as room goes, leg space goes, because obviously you can move the seats forward and back, you can even leave this middle seat out. That could help in that area as well. Now, depending on trim level, we'll determine what you have as far as the ability to have USB back here. We don't have any in this case, but we do have the cup holders and a very nice view of that panoramic sunroof that does have the shade that can be drawn forward on a hot day like this, I think that would be helpful. And one more quick note, if the middle row seat passengers hop out and they don't let the rear seat passengers out, no problem, just push that button and the seat does the exact same thing, makes it easy to get out. And there is the shade for the panoramic sunroof in case you are curious to see what that looks like. And you have the control center here on the rear of the center console for the single zone climate control here in the rear, we have dual zone in the front. You can control fan speed and temperature back here. You can also use the USB connectivity as well as the 12 volt power outlet. And taking a look in through the passenger side front door, a little bit more length on the armrest, a little more space within the door bin, Power seats for the driver and the passenger, very comfortable. They do wrap around your body quite nicely. And you will find some gloss black around the interior, especially here in the front seating area. Not a bad thing necessarily, but it's here. And one thing that I really like is the fact that on a lot of vehicles, even at higher price points than this MDX, is you will find seat memory, multiple seat memory settings on the driver's side but not very often are you going to find the same thing over here on the passenger side. So as you can see, there it is. That definitely makes a difference for the passengers. Nice, comfortable felt lining within the glove box. And then, like I said, dual zone climate control here in the front. We're also going to have those hidden away USB ports. That helps out, just keeps a nice clean look there and then you can turn the auto stop start feature off or idle stop. And that's always a good thing. I like to leave that off. Brake hold mode is there. And then there is the push button shifter. Tell me what you think about that. Do you like it? Do you not? 
Everybody has their varying opinions on that. And wireless charging, that's always a plus, as well as the cup holders. And you have a couple of different options here as far as your center console goes. You have a little bit of space here in the front, or you can use this release. We'll put that back down, and that gains access to the interior that is a lot deeper. Quite a bit of space there, another USB option, and another 12-volt power outlet. And in case you were wondering about controlling the shade, there is the control for that shade for the panoramic sunroof, and here's the button for controlling the tilt and sliding function to open the sunroof. We're not going to do that right now, but trust me, it does happen. And with a few exceptions, we're going to see pretty much a mirror image of what we saw on the passenger side door here on the driver's side. You will have all the controls for the side view mirrors for those heated power folding, power adjustable side view mirrors. You can obviously control all of the windows from here as well. And again, the seats are power for the driver and the passenger. You have some safety features there. You can turn on and off a power tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel that is comfortable and leather wrapped. We'll hop inside. and start everything up for you. Just to let you see what happens when you get into the vehicle as far as a very nice modern looking instrument cluster. Here are your steering wheel mounted controls. You can see everything that's there. I probably don't need to tell you too much about what you have there. And then we're going to have our drive mode selector. I didn't talk about this earlier because I couldn't show you much of what was going on with that, but you can see what you have here you have, let's go all the way up here, we're going to have snow, we're going to have comfort, normal, sport, and if you push the center button right here, you go into individual mode, and that way you can configure everything however you want. That's a good thing. Now, one thing that a lot of people might say, I'm not so crazy about that. It's not hard to get used to. It works just fine. This is the trackpad for controlling the screen. Now, it is not a touch screen, but don't let that scare you off because honestly, it's not that hard to use. You obviously have the built-in navigation here if you want to use that. And all you have to do when you find whatever it is you want to select or if you want to go home, you do have to push down on this area. We can push down on that button to go home and see what all we have here. There's quite a few features here as far as the functionality goes and what you can do with the vehicle. In fact, you have quite a few camera views as well. Let's take a look at what those are. So we'll do the same thing. We're going to go through and select the different camera views, the overhead view. If you were going to tow with your MDX, well, that wouldn't be very hard to do. You could do that right here. You could back up to a trailer. Wouldn't even need anybody's help. You can also use that particular camera view. Maybe there's something behind you and you're wanting to know how close you are to it. Well, it just makes things a little bit easier as far as that goes. A lot of features here. Quite a bit for the money. Like I say, one of the most reasonably priced luxury three-row SUVs you're going to find. By the way, if you're new to the Acura brand, here is what happens when you get into the Acura. And here is what happens when you get out. So what is the ultimate driving experience like here in the MDX? Well, whether you're driving through a neighborhood such as what I'm doing right now, or you're out on the highway, it's a very pleasant experience. The 290 horsepower is plenty of power to get up to speed when you need to, if you need to pass a slower moving vehicle on say a two lane road, whatever the situation is, a motor home, maybe one of the tractors, you're out in the country or something, you have to go around and when it's safe to, there's plenty of power here to do that. And keep in mind, you do have sport mode that will also aid in such a thing. And like I said earlier, one of the big advantages to the MDX is the balance that is not something you see very often or experience very often where you have a comfortable ride quality that's balanced with a very sporty handling situation. You just don't get that very often, but here you do. A lot of space within the interior 
for driver and passengers. Obviously, you have ample cargo capacity back there in the rear, especially when you lower the second and third row of seats. It really kind of expands things out and just makes it so easy to be able to haul whatever it is you may need to haul. Even if you have a family and you just have a couple of kids or whoever's going to be sitting in the middle row area, you can still lower those third row seats and still have quite a bit of space. And the technology here, while I realize this is not a touch screen, and the reason for that is because, well, as you can see, I mean, I'm five foot ten, so my arms are reasonably long. I'd have to lean way forward to be able to actually use the touch screen. Especially, I mean, you really shouldn't be doing that when you're driving, obviously, no matter what, but that's one reason why it's not a touch screen, at least not yet. Like I say, we'll see some changes at some point in the future. I'm not sure when that might come but we'll just have to wait and see. But overall, a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. It does look nice, it looks modern. In my personal opinion, everything here is very easy to learn and very easy to use. If you have a smartphone, you won't have a problem, that's for sure. So no matter what the situation is, you're really doing quite well here. But I am curious, since these auto manufacturers such as Acura, do things differently now than they used to. So instead of having a customer survey that you fill out at the dealership, they mainly use the comments section of videos such as the one you're watching now to see what it is that consumers want in the future when they make changes to these vehicles. So I'm curious to know, when there is another full redesign of the MDX, what changes would you like to see? So tell me what your thoughts are down in the comments section. Is the 2024 version of the Acura MDX still the king of three-row crossover SUVs? Tell me what your answer is and tell me why you answered the way that you did. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.